Well, thank you guys so much for coming. My name is Megan Ellis. I'm going to be talking a little bit about gamification in the classroom today. I am uh, an English teacher and a tech mentor and integration specialist in Palo Alto, California. I primarily teach seventh grade English um, at Jordan Middle School. I have some really delightful, um, strange, bizarre 12-year-olds in my class. Um, I'm a Google certified teacher. I'm leading edge certified. Um, I'm a Q lead learner. I was Q's 2013 outstanding emerging teacher. And you can uh, tweet at me at Megan Rose Ellis if, uh, if that's what you're into, if you like doing that. Um, the one thing you really need to know about me for this session is that I do not, um, <laughs> I don't play video games. I didn't grow up playing video games. My brother spent a lot of time playing video games. And when gamification started getting really popular um, a year or so ago, I knew that gaming strategies were something I wanted to integrate into my classroom, but I didn't really have any idea how to. I didn't know a lot of gaming language. I didn't know how games were structured. I didn't know um, really anything about game dynamics at all. But fortunately, my husband did. Uh, my husband is a high school physics teacher in, uh, Carl Mont Cal um, at Carlmont High School in Belmont, California, and my husband plays a lot of video games. Um, and so I can credit a lot of what we're going to talk about today to a lot of my husband's ideas, because I had some really general thoughts about, like, well, this was how gamification might work in my classroom, but my husband was really the one who was like, no, like, this is actually how a game works. Um, and so some of the dynamics and strategies that I'm going to talk about today um, are credited to my husband, who loves his margaritas and his cinnamon rolls. Uh, so these are some of my students. Like I said, I teach seventh grade English, and 12-year-olds are the weirdest, uh, bizarre breed of creature that I've probably ever taught in my life. This is my fifth year teaching seventh grade, and before I taught seventh grade, I did teach high schoolers. Um, and Jordan is a weird school. It's a lovely place to work, but Palo Alto is an interesting place to work. Um, my students are generally highly motivated. They're really smart. They do really well academically. Um, but they do other things very poorly, um, and most of those things involve study skills. So my kids are really bad about coming to class on time, bringing their materials to class, writing down their homework, um, turning in their homework on time, participating in class discussions. Um, my students are really used to getting A's for just breathing. Um, <laughs> And some of your students might be that way, too. Um, my students are also 12. And so developmentally, that's sort of an appropriate place for them to be. But it's really, really frustrating as a teacher to teach students who are so um, intrinsically bright but not motivated to do anything to actually get the grade. Um, and my students are total point mongers. They want every single point, even if they didn't do the work to get the points, which is really frustrating as a teacher. Um, and so when I started thinking about, like, OK, what are the things that I want to do with gamification, you can talk about gamification in a lot of different ways. And I see teachers gamifying their classrooms where every single component of their academic curricula is gamified. And I'm super impressed by that. I'm also not that organized, and my curriculum is constantly changing. So for me to think about my curriculum as a game, was really, really complicated and really felt like too much of a, like something I couldn't really do. But when I really thought about what my students need, did my students need to be engaged in my curriculum? No, they were already engaged in the work that we were doing. My students were not engaged in the study skills piece of middle school. So when I started thinking about gamification, I said, this is the thing that's not working in my classroom. Like, study skills are not working. We have a school study skills goal. It's still not working. Um, so what can I do in my classroom to really motivate the students for whom study skills are a real struggle? Study skills are also kind of a, an abstract concept. And so I was really struggling to find sort of concrete language to, um, to solidify some of those study skills. Um, so how do I teach study skills in a meaningful and relevant way that doesn't take away from like all the other actual academic stuff? that I'm supposed to teach. I also wanted to eliminate extra credit completely. Um, I'm tired of the extra credit conversation. I'm tired of students asking me for extra credit. I'm really tired of students coming to me two days before the end of a grading period and saying, I have an 85%, what can I do to get an A? You could do A work. Um, <laughs> like, is there extra work that I can do, which is just extra work for me? I really hate that. 
And um, I really wanted to get rid of that, like, I'm done early, now what should I do conversation. And, uh, you know, I was that teacher that had, like, the bins of, like, extra, you know, extension work. And my students were like, well, do I get credit for this? Well, no. Well, then I'm not going to do it. And I'm just going to, like, crawl all, of, all over the place and act like a crazy person. So <laughs> I needed to find something that would, A, help me teach study skills in a relevant and meaningful way while not taking time away from my academic work, that would eliminate extra credit, and that would sort of get rid of this, like, what do I do with my early finishers? So. I started thinking about games. And although I'm not a video game player, as soon as I started thinking about games, I realized that game dynamics are really everywhere. And game dynamics are really big in a lot of different areas. Um, I love a to-do list. I don't know if you guys love to-do lists. Carrot is a to-do list app um, that rewards you for getting things done. Carrot calls you, the human, a lazy meat bag. And as you accomplish things on your to-do list, you level up. Um, and when you are lazy and you don't check things off your to-do list, Carrot gets angry with you. Um, and it switches from the really nice, lovely white and blue screen to the black mood swing screen. If you can read it, it says, it's been 18 hours since you did anything useful. And the more you use Carrot, the amount of time that she gives you to get stuff done gets shorter and shorter. So like I would check something off my to-do list at like 8 p.m. in the evening, and by the next morning, she's like, you have been lazy for 12 hours. I was sleeping. <laughs> but um, as you level up, you get stuff. Um, so you unlock different parts of the app, and you're able to do more things in the app. At one point, you get a kitten. <laughs> Although if Carrot is angry with you, and you have been lazy, she doesn't kill the kitten. I see some of you looking really concerned. Um, <laughs> But the food that she gives you to feed the kitten are things like shoes um, instead of tuna. So, so Carrot is great. You unlock upgrades. You get you know, mini games within the app. It's really fun. And I was like, well, I'm kind of attracted to that. I like the idea of leveling up. Like That's something that feels exciting to me. Um, if you're a runner, I don't know if you've ever used the Zombies Run app. Zombies Run is uh, it's a running app for your phone. Um, and as you run, there's a game. So you're, you're runner five, and you're participating in the zombie apocalypse. And you are trying to gather supplies for your, for your town. Um, and as you're running, you're running, you're running. And then in your headphones, you hear the zombies like coming after you. And if you don't run fast enough, the zombies do get you, and you die. Um, so you know, if you need a little extra motivation as you're running, um, I have a Fitbit, and I love getting my badges when I, you know, reach a whatever level in my Fitbit. And I don't even know what happened to Foursquare, but it used to make me very excited to get badges in Foursquare, and then it turned into this swarm thing, and I don't know what's going on. Um, but we see game dynamics in a lot of places. There are some banks that are using game dynamics in their, in their mobile apps. Um, and so I was like, gosh, like, if we're seeing game dynamics everywhere, like, it just makes sense for me to put game dynamics in my classroom even though I am not a gamer in the slightest. So I had a few things I wanted to accomplish when I was thinking about game dynamics and what my philosophy would be in my classroom. I wanted this to not be connected to my students' grades or to their academic performance. And I know people who do tie gamification stuff to their, um, to their students' academic grades, but I was tired of making study skills like a part of my grade book because I didn't feel that it was authentic at the end of the year to say that my students got an A because in that section of the grade book for study, I don't know, like I wanted my grade book to be about reading and writing because I'm an English teacher and it felt silly to attach a grade to like, did you bring your book? Do you have a pencil today? Like that was annoying and weird to me. Um, I wanted to provide opportunities for extra learning that were not um, central to my curriculum. So when students finish early, I want them doing things that are related to my content, but I didn't want to have to feel like, oh, well, like these 10 kids have done this extra thing, but these 10 kids haven't, and I need all of them to have this skill. Um, there's tons of like cool games, and my students are horrible typers, so I always want them practicing their typing skills. And so I wanted to find a way to incentivize and encourage my students to participate in those things without having to answer that like, well, I did it, so are you going to give me credit for it situation. And I wanted to use gaming language to help my students set concrete goals 
for the abstract skills of study skills. Um, the students that I'm trying to reach <laughs> with this strategy are, are not the ones that are already doing really well academically. Um, and they're the ones who, although they may be hooked because they like coming to my class because I'm nice, or they think the book that I'm reading is really interesting, um, they are just sort of like, oh, you told me to write that down. Eh, I just don't really feel like it. Oh, I'm supposed to have my composition notebook today. I'll just use a piece of paper. Like, there's a reason we do things a certain way in my classroom. If you could, like, fall in line, I would really appreciate it. Um, so there's four main game dynamics that I was exploring that I've decided to integrate into my classroom. And the first one is the fact that games provide feedback and really any type of game. So if you play Candy Crush, this will apply to you as well. You don't have to, like, be playing super intense video games. But games provide feedback. They recognize your achievements early and often. And if you've pl ever played any sort of game, you know that in order to level up maybe the first five times, it's like stupid easy. It's so easy to pass the first five levels. And that's how it hooks you. You're like, oh, I could totally do this. And then as you progress, it gets harder and harder. And games encourage through failure, which school does not do at all. Right? So my students will play a video game, and they'll die. And they'll be like, oh, I need to try again. My students will write an essay for me, and they get a D. And they're like, I'm never doing this again. So um, in my classroom, my students, uh, this is sort of, this is huge in my classroom, too. I've actually never seen it this huge. This is a little insane. Um, this is how we structured uh, the game. And this is with help from my husband. Because my original idea was just like, oh, we'll just make it like 40 points per level. And Brian was like, no, 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 no. You have to make it really easy at the beginning, and then it exponentially gets more difficult. So students level up early and often, and that hooks them. And then it takes them longer and longer and longer to get to the, to the next levels. And the other thing my husband told me, which I never really thought about, is in a video game, the rewards that you get when you first start the game are like necessities for the game. And then the rewards that you get as the game goes on are like extras, like things that are really cool. So Brian was like, well, what are the things that like students need in your class that like you provide for them? Which is like, whatever. Like, I've all, I always give my students bathroom passes. So in the first three levels, my students get all of their bathroom passes and candy, because that's a huge motivator in seventh grade, um, as they level up. Then as we get further, this stuff is not necessities, but they're like perks. So we have a bunch of mystery scratchers. I don't know if you guys have ever made your own lotto tickets, but I made a whole bunch of like mystery scratchers for my students that have got like all kinds of things. So they just pull a random mystery scratcher and they scratch it off with a penny or the tip of their pencil, and they get, I don't know, an extra bathroom pass, or a locker pass, or um, a free homework pass, or they get to sit anywhere they want in the class. Um, things that are like cool to have, but are obviously like not necessities for being really successful um, in my class. Um, the second dynamic that I was really interested in pursuing was the idea that games provide structure. So. Um, there's like three main goals in any game that you play. The immediate goal is to complete whatever particular task you are trying to complete. Then there's the short-term goal, which is to complete the level that you're on. And the long-term goal, of course, is to win the game. So in my classroom, the immediate goal is to keep the points that they get every day um, or earn bonus points. So the way this is set up in my classroom, my students get five XP experience points um, every day. And those, those are theirs to keep, or those are theirs to lose, um, or they're theirs to earn even more. Their short-term goal is to level up. So with that poster that I showed you um, a few slides back, in the beginning, it's easy for them to level up. If they're getting 5 XP a day, and they reach level 1 at 10 XP, obviously, by the second day of the semester, we're leveling up. But as we get further and further along, the gap grows from 10 to 40 to 60 to 80, where it takes them longer and longer to level up, and they have to sort of slog through. Um, and they're also leveling up. They're obviously leveling up in individually. But my students also level up as a class. So while everybody has an individual reward, I've also built in rewards for the entire class. So the first class to get every single student to level five gets donuts. Sixth period had that last week. It was very exciting. The other classes are super irritated. Like, why didn't we get donuts? Um, because 
I don't want them only battling each other. They don't really battle each other that much. I want them working together as a class. I want to sort of create a class culture where kids are encouraging each other and loaning each other pencils and reminding each other to bring their binder reminders and telling each other to stop being obnoxious. Um, and the long-term goal is, of course, to win the game. And to win the game in my class, you get to level 11. And when you win the game, Mr. Ellis, not Mrs. Ellis, Mr. Ellis will bake you a cake. And if you've ever played Portal, the cake is not a lie. The cake, act, thank you, somebody's played Portal. <laughs> the cake actually exists. Um, one kid has reached level 11, um, and Mr. Ellis baked him a cake. And they talk about the cake all year long. <laughs> well, how big is the cake? What flavor is the cake? Does the cake have frosting? Is it a homemade cake or is it a store-bought cake? Can I share the cake? Do I have to share the cake? Like it's, it's constant. We're always talking about this stupid cake. I almost regret including the cake. Um, yeah, and, and that long-term goal is to win the cake for Mr. Ellis. Um, the, other, the other bit of structure that I like is that students know how the game is played. Like, they, and I don't know that we can all, or students can always say that about school. But my students know, like, this is the structure. Five XP every single day. I gain extra XP by doing extra things or being really exceptional or making a really great point. I lose XP by being tardy, by not having my homework, by being a jerk. Uh, Mrs. Ellis needs to move my seat by not having my book for SSR, whatever. There's a million things they can lose XP for. Um, and so I said this, they start with five XP daily. And then the other structure is that we level up every Monday. I can't handle leveling up every single time. Like, I have other things to teach. So um, every Monday I calculate how much XP they earn from the week before. Um, I, and then we do a little level up ceremony. It takes about five minutes at the beginning of class on Monday. It's kind of a cool way to start the week where we do a little celebration and all of the kids who are leveling up that day, they come up and get whatever it is they're getting, their pencil or their mystery scratcher or their candy or something, whatever. Um, and I like, I like having sort of that, um, that physical acknowledgement of students who are like just moving through the year. And it's really an acknowledgement every week, like, hey, we are, as a class, we are making progress, <laughs> like we are going somewhere. Um, it's just a really nice way to start the week. However, not everyone levels up every single week. Some weeks nobody levels up at all because we're sort of in a long slog from one level to the other. Other weeks like five kids in one class will level up and 15 kids in another class will level up because they've been doing extra stuff. Um, or certain students won't level up because they've been absent or because their behavior has been really poor or because they haven't been doing their homework. And then it's better than the what can I do to get my grade up conversation. It's the what can I do to get more XP? Well, here I notice on my spreadsheet that you have not brought your book to class for the last seven days. Maybe you should bring your book to class. It's, just, it's really just a suggestion, just an idea. Um, in terms of being prepared for class, you need to have your thing so that you can be successful. I was tired of taking points off their grade for not having their book because when they don't have their book, do I have an extra book for them? Yeah, of course I do. Um, so it's not detrimental to their grade, but it is detrimental to their sort of development of study skills. Games require attention. You have to pay attention when you're playing a game. Um, and this is something that my husband told me. So good surprises in a game are good. Because like, hey, it's a lucky surprise. Bad surprises in a game can also be good. Because, oh wow, I wasn't paying attention, and that goblin came and ate me, so now I know I need to pay attention. But no surprises are no good. And if you've ever heard Rushton Hurley speak, um, he talks about how like students are bored. They're so bored. Um, and they need to be surprised. They need to be stimulated. My husband told me about something called the appointment dynamic, which is the idea of like getting something just for showing up. If you, uh, if you play Candy Crush, um, and you spin the little wheel every single day that you play candy and you get something every single day. So my idea of the appointment dynamic is like you don't have to earn every single XP every day. You show up, you get five. Whether you choose to keep them or lose them is up to you. 
But I needed to find some other ways, like how do I like surprise kids and keep them engaged and working? And what I really wanted them to do is I really want my students consistently checking Schoology, which is our learning management system. My students are really, really bad about that. So they're bad about bringing their agendas to class and writing down their homework because they tell me, oh, but you post everything on Schoology. But then they don't check Schoology. And then they come to me and they're like, you didn't tell me that was due. Well, actually, it was like everywhere, all the places that you never check. So um, I've started throwing in some sort of surprises and appointment dynamics um, onto Schoology. So remember, surprises are good. I posted this last night at 5.30. Just like this post on Schoology. Thanks for checking Schoology on the weekend. At noon today, there were eight likes. All of my students should be checking Schoology over the weekend because they have homework due on Monday. Eight students. We'll show this on Monday. Um, when we have a short week, um, it's a short week, hooray! Any bonus XP you submit before the long weekend is worth double. I won't put this on my website. I will not post this on the smart board at the beginning of class. I'll put this on Schoology on Monday morning before Thanksgiving break. They don't have any work due that day, um, but any bonus XP that they do, and I'll talk about that in a minute, would be worth double. And they're rewarded for that by checking Schoology. Sometimes I ask them, what's your number one book recommendation for your classmates? This is on Schoology too. I never mention it in class, I don't talk about it in class, but if you're on Schoology, you see it there, you participate, you get some bonus XP. And this one is always my favorite. <laughs> I'm gonna check binder reminders every day this week. And if you have your binder reminder every single day this week, you'll earn 15 bonus XP in addition to the daily XP. So they earn 20 XP every week if they just like show up and act like a normal human being. And then 15 on top, of that's like three free days, Mrs. Ellis. Yes, I know. Um, so surprises are good. I like, I like surprising them with things on Schoology. I like giving them reasons. Okay, the reason to check Schoology is that's where your homework is. Um, but obviously they're not doing it. So I like to sort of build in reasons for them, like other reasons for you to check in um, and make sure that, oh hey, I do have work due tomorrow, maybe I should do it. And then the other aspect of games that, that obviously I was most attracted to is the fact that games are social. So games create opportunities for competition, games create opportunities for collaboration, um, they use leaderboards, um, and at times cooperative multiplayer, if you've ever played a multiplayer uh, video game. And so in my class, we have a public leaderboard. So this is posted on my website, um, which is ellis-english.com. Uh, this is only part of my class. I have all 100 of my students listed in the leaderboard because I like the various periods to be able to see um, who's doing what or whatever. Jeremy is clearly like kicking everybody's butt. Most of the kids right now are sort of in the 150 to 160 range. Um, it's impossible to reach level 11 in my class if you're just getting your 5 XP every day. Um, you have to do extra stuff in order to, to get to, lo to level 11. And like I said, my students have individual and class rewards. They keep their 5 XP every day by being in their seat at the bell. I don't know why my students have such a hard time coming to class on time. They have five minutes of passing period and their social studies class is next door. <laughs> Literally five feet away from me. Um, they need to have all of their homework, all of their materials. They're attentive, they're on task, they're actively participating. In seventh grade especially, I really want my students um, learning how to participate in class, learning how to be part of a class discussion, learning how to validate their classmates' ideas and agree and disagree respectfully. And what generally happens in seventh grade especially, but probably in other grades too, um, is I've got like five kids in every class who are really great participators. And by nature of being really great participators, it actually makes them really bad participators because they don't let anyone else in the class speak. Um, and so I really try to encourage other students to speak. And part of that is through is through the idea of XP, like, hey, I need to hear 95% of my students speaking today. If I hear 95% of you speaking, everyone in the class is gonna get five bonus XP. And then of course, like the kids are like, okay, what's the math, 95% of 27 kids, and da, da 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 and they're like figuring out how many kids need to talk, which is, and then they're encouraging each other. I don't like to be the one that's like, hey, Johnny, I haven't heard your voice yet today, what are you thinking? 
It's way better when his partner's like, Johnny, you really need to say something. Like, you just told me something really good. Raise your hand and say it to the class. It means so much more when it's coming from them um, than when it's coming from me. So just some nuts and bolts on how I get a lot of this, um, a lot of this done. So I use, um, this is how I taught really even before I started doing all of this, but um, I'm definitely like a paper spreadsheet on the clipboard to write down all the stuff that's going on sort of deal. So I start with sort of a blank paper checklist um, that I'm gonna use for two weeks to keep track of all kinds of stuff. It's where I keep track of attendance, it's where I keep track of whether they had their homework or not. It's where I keep track of their participation. It's where I keep track of if they lose points because I had to move them or ask them to stop talking or not throw the bean bag across the room or whatever. Um, it usually looks something like this at the end of the week. Some weeks are, are more <laughs> heavily used than others. Um, and sort of up at the top, I just mark down like this is the homework that I collected that week. Um, when students are absent, uh, they don't get any XP, nothing at all. Um, and if they come see me the day after they were absent, they make up their XP in full. And this is actually one of the main reasons that I really started doing this. My students um, miss a lot of school for trips to Spain and, you know, cross country competitions in Colorado um, and like all kinds of ridiculous things. And then um, they don't ever come check in with me about what they missed. And then three weeks later, when they finally check their grade, they're like, oh, I'm missing five assignments. What, what should I do? Like, well, you, those were assignments that we were doing while you were gone. Um, so I really am trying to encourage students. We have what's built into our day. We call it team. Um, it's 10 minutes after the bell, the final class bell rings every day. And it is technically part of our school day where students are so, you know, supposed to like come and see their teachers and get help or whatever. And really what that ends up being is like, I sit in my classroom for 10 minutes by myself. My room is right across from the bike cage. All of my students walk by my room before they leave for the day and nobody comes to check in with me ever, even if they've been absent. Um, so when students are absent, I'm like, look, you don't get any XP, you get a zero. It's like you weren't even living that day um, unless you come see me. Now you might come see me and I might tell you, you know what, we had a class discussion that day, thanks for coming in to check, you know, you can be a participant in our class discussion tomorrow and I'll give them all their XP. And some kids feel like that's a waste of their time. I think it's really good for students to know what is going on in their classroom when they are not there. Um, other times it's like, hey, I'm really glad you checked in because we took a quiz and I collected homework and I gave you this handout. If they hadn't come to check in, they would have gotten a zero on the quiz, a zero on the homework, and a zero for the handout that we worked on together in class that day. Um, I use a Google spreadsheet for our leaderboard. Um, that's basically what you see on my website. Um, I use a really simple, it's not super technical, I use a, a sum function to calculate the XP. Um, but there's a ton of hidden columns. I'm gonna show you what that looks like um, in just a minute. I do update that once a week, like I said. Um, sometimes my students are like, hey, I did some bonus XP last night. Have you put it in yet? I'm like, no, because I was cooking dinner. Um, so I, I calculate all of that stuff either um, at the end of the day on Friday or before class starts on Monday and we do a big class level up on Monday. Um, this is just sort of a, a brief shot of what my students see in the leaderboard. So they see their name, what period they are in, um, the number of XP they have and what level that is. But what is really going on is a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I keep track of bonus XP, which I haven't talked about yet, and then I have a separate column for every single week. Um, and that makes it really easy for me to go back when students do come see me at team after they've been absent, um, to be like, oh, okay, so I can see, you know, Tyler, you got a nine out of 10 that week and, and add whatever XP uh, they happen to be missing. Then the big thing, which this is what my students love most of all, um, is the idea of bonus XP. Um, and this was sort of my like, how do I get rid of extra credit and how do I deal with like those students who finish early? Um, so I have this enormous document linked on my website 
of a whole ton of different type of bonus XP opportunities. So there's a ton of vocabulary building stuff, so freerice.com and vocabulary.com. Um, there's a ton of typing opportunities. Um, I really like using NitroType with my students, and so they create accounts in NitroType, and then they like race each other with their typing skills. Um, there's writing competitions that they can enter. They can write a post for my class blog and get bonus XP. They can, and there's all kinds of different stuff. There's a lot of YouTube ones, so like, you know, watch five Smarter Everyday videos and summarize them, and they get bonus XP for that. Um, I used to run this whole bonus XP thing through Class Badges, and Class Badges is a really great website with lots of really cool features, but my students were so excited about bonus XP that it just became, um, it became unmanageable. Uh, they would like do their bonus XP and take a screenshot and then send me an email with the screenshot and then I would have to go into class badges and assign the badge and then I still had to update the spreadsheet. It was a total nightmare. Um, so now I just have my students, uh, they just fill out a Google form. So basically almost everything that my students have to do for bonus XP, they, um, they take a screenshot. They put that screenshot in a folder in their Google Drive that's already been shared with me and then they just fill out the form with their name, whatever bonus XP they did, how much XP they earned, and a link to that screenshot, because that's in their Google Drive. And then I end up with the spreadsheet um, that I go through every week that's like every single kid's name, how much bonus XP they earned, and a link to the evidence, which I never actually look at, um, because I have a life. But they have no idea. Um, and that's made it, a, it's just made it a ton, a ton easier, and much easier for me to update that bonus XP column in the spreadsheet. Um, having it all in one place. Instead of what I ended up with last year when they were sending me emails were like 100 emails on Monday morning of, bon of XP that I had to sort of calculate. Um, and then I didn't know how much certain things were worth and so I had to find it in class badges which is actually not super well organized and it was really, really messy. So my students loved the idea of leveling up and the idea of the game a lot last year but the management on my end was really sort of a disaster. So in an attempt to work smarter but not harder, um, I went with just having all of the XP in a Google Doc that students could search and look through. The badges, the, the cute little icons, those are still from class badges. I just stole them. Um, and then uh, submitting, submitting their XP to a Google form. So this doesn't work for every kid, like, obviously. I still have students who are complete disasters, they're organizational nightmares, um, but it does work for some kids, and it works really well for the boys. Um, it's true. However, it's usually the girls who are in the lead. And the girls are usually in the lead without even really trying. Um, <laughs> But that just kills the boys that like Eve is beating me and she's not even trying. Um, and so it has been, it's really changed the conversation about class expectations in my class. There's no arguing over the rules. Like these are, these are our rules. You follow them, you level up. You don't follow them and you don't level up. And that's a detriment to you and eventually that's also a detriment to your class. Your class is gonna be annoyed with you. Um, this is Ujwal, and Ujwal got the cake last year. That's Mr. Ellis, he did make the cake. He did not think he was gonna have to do that last year. Um, that's only a very small piece of the cake. Ujwal got a whole like big cake that he did share with his classmates, which was very nice of him. Um, this is another sheet on the, um, on the spreadsheet. It's the Cake Hall of Fame, and uh, every kid wants their picture on the Cake Hall of Fame. Um, hey, I really blew through that really quickly, but I'm glad that there are fewer of you in here than I thought there might be, and I would love to answer some questions. If you have questions about gamification. Yeah, nice and loud. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so my husband, my husband teaches um, AP and Honors Physics, and uh, he teaches uh, a computer science, like a coding class. Um, so when we were talking about, when I started talking about this, my husband sort of said, like, if I were thinking about myself as a seventh grader, 
if I'm remembering myself in seventh grade. He's like, these are some of the things that would have made me more invested in like what's going on in the world of my classroom. Um, I think in AP and honors physics, he just doesn't have time <laughs> to you know, level up and buy kids pencils and hand out dum-dums and I mean, it, it lends itself really nicely to sort of the age of my kids. Not that, not that it can't be done in high school, obviously, um, but this particular model was really designed with my kids' particular needs in mind, um, although there's certainly nothing to say that, that it couldn't be adapted to more academic um, skills and strategies for students, yeah. like a week. Um, it, re it really did not take long at all. And what I do is I don't start it right away. So the first week of school, that level up poster is like front and center in my room, and I don't ever talk about it. And they're like, what is this level up business? Why is there a cake? What is going on? What is XP? I'm so, and like they gather at the front of the room, and that's intentional on my part. Like I kind of want to create a little bit of a buzz before, um, before I actually explain it. And that first level where it just takes like 10 points to level up, that's the only time that we level up in the middle of the week. So I start on Monday, by Wednesday, everybody is leveled up. We do a level up ceremony right there on, on Wednesday, um, just to get the kids to kind of buy in. It doesn't take them long. There are some kids who maybe a few weeks into the school year are like, I just don't get why everyone has more XP than I do. <laughs> and then their, their like table partner will turn to them and be like, do you have your binder reminder today? And he's like, no. Were you tardy today? He's like, yeah. Like, that's why you don't have all your XP. Um, or students who are, who are uh, habitually absent. Um, that takes them a little while, too, because not only do they have the habit of being habitually absent, they also have a habit of, of not checking in with their teachers. And so um, usually, usually we, we get there eventually, but for those kids especially, I really, I cannot force them to come, I can't force them to come see me after school. But like that's exactly what they need to be doing and they need to be in a habit of doing that. And especially when I have kids who are habitually absent, once they do finally come see me, I'm like, and hey, you should go next door and talk to your social studies teacher and then over to the G-Wing and talk to your science teacher. Because you were gone for five days and you didn't even tell us you were gonna be gone. And then I saw on Infinite Campus that you were in Indonesia. So, I know you missed a science test. Have you made that up yet? And they're like, oh, yeah, I should do that. <laughs> um, but for some of those kids, that's been a habit for them since elementary school. Um, and I know what they're gonna, be, what they're gonna ex be expected to do in high school, and like that is not, like that's not gonna work. So if we can break that habit early, um, I, think, I think that's a benefit to them too. So for some of them, yeah, it takes longer, but most of them are like, I got this. I understand how a game works. Yeah? Yes, and we didn't get access to the Schoology badges until after I had started doing my badges um, with class badges last year, and so I didn't want to change the, uh, I didn't want to change the process halfway through the year last year, so we got access to Schoology badges maybe in like January of last year, um, and my students were already kind of used to that process. And then when I was sort of reinventing it for this year, I did think about changing to Schoology badges, but um, what, I, what I realized with, with my kids is they didn't really care about the badge that much um, for the purpose of what we were doing. They were more interested in the XP that was being applied toward the game. So even though the badges and class badges were like super cute and like really well designed, I don't know how often my students ever even logged into class badges to look at them. Um, so I haven't, I haven't sort of gone that way just because I realized that the badges were just kind of superfluous. So let me, if you don't mind me like, whoo, going way back to the beginning, no big deal. Um, so we have donuts for the first class that gets every student to level five. And then we do a game day for the first class that gets every student to level seven. And by game day two, that's like, we get to like hang out and play Scrabble and games all day. And whatever I'm doing in my other classes, we're just not doing in that class. So it's sort of like a free day that we don't need to make up, which they especially really like. 
And then we've never gotten everybody in every class in, in a class to level 10, but level 10 is like a movie day for the first class. And again, like, and that's a free day, and we don't make up whatever um, whatever classes, whatever the other classes were doing. Um, I really wanted to think about things that that I don't normally do in class two. Like we watch very few movies in my class. Um, we are working like every day, and donuts are just a nice, like kids always just like donuts. So <laughs> that's why I went with donuts. And that one is that we always get somebody, we always get at least one class to level five each semester, and so that's always a given, and that one's really easy. Yeah? We do start over at the semester, and as my students say, they're like, you mean we die? <laughs> yes, you all die at the end of the semester, and we start over. Yeah, we start over the semester. You could easily run it for the whole year. I was just afraid that they might like lose steam around the third quarter, um, and I wanted it to kind of always feel fresh, and I didn't want kids who had fallen behind in the first semester to then feel like they could never get anywhere. Yeah? And then you talked about having game playing good surprises and bad surprises. Do you have bad surprises that show up in your game? Um, not a lot. Uh, some days, so I always, I always mark their participation in our class discussions. And then at the end of a class discussion, what I'll usually say is like, all right, everybody who participated today gets you know, two bonus XP. Occasionally I will say, anyone who didn't participate today, you're losing three XP. Um, same thing with the binder reminders. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll be like, all right, everybody get out their binder reminder. Everyone who has their binder reminder is getting bonus XP today. Um, and then usually one day a week, and they never know when. Everybody who doesn't have your binder reminder, you're losing XP today. Um, I never want it to be something like so huge that like kids are like, I died. Like everyone who doesn't have their binder reminder goes back to zero today. Like that would be a little tragic. Um, I think I might lose some kids that way. Um, so I don't try to make it too extreme, but just so they don't really, like they know how the game is played, but they don't always know what's coming next, which I think is true um, in, in a regular game situation too. Yeah? So kids who show up at the beginning of the second quarter, I calculate how much XP they would have earned just daily, because there are always kids in uh, a huge group of kids in the leaderboard that don't do anything extra they're just getting their five XP every day, and then that kid goes in into that into that section of the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, they don't have to start at zero. That would also be a little depressing. Yeah, in the back. I guess for me, this works for my kids because they don't spend enough time dealing with the rules. You know, like. I needed my students to pay more attention to the soft skills that they need in, need in order to be successful. But if my students were good at that, maybe I would have needed this f to do something different. Yeah, it's the ability to like just turn it off. And my dad used to call me the deaf and dumb when I was in class. Just shut up, shut up. <laughs> that changed a lot. Right. So I just made them do things and trying to balance things. Out. Yeah, definitely. And I wonder, I've talked about this with other teachers who teach at all girls schools too. And, um, and a lot of them have said, like, it needs to be more collaborative and less individual when you're dealing with all girls, because they're so much more social and they want to work together. So it might be fewer individual rewards and more, like, whole class rewards, because they're working together. But I've never taught in an all-girls school, so. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically, when I'm looking at that, um, when I'm looking at the spreadsheet, back to my nuts and bolts, there we go. Um, I'm sort of looking at four days at a time. I see my students four days a week. Um, and it's five XP a day. So if I'm looking across at, our, at the very top student, Annika, for the first four days, so there's no marks at all, so she's automatically getting 20 points. So I really am just looking at the kids that have marks, whether it's a plus mark or a minus mark, and adjusting um, above or below 20. And then when I'm in my spreadsheet, I sort, I, the spreadsheet is automatically sorted by XP and whoever's at the top and whatever. There's another hidden column with their last name. So I sort by last name and by period, and then I just enter them really quickly. And my sum function is already set up, so all I do is enter and the, the total XP calculates itself. 
I would say probably looking at this and looking at the bonus XP spreadsheet, I might spend 15 to 20 minutes on Monday morning updating. I'm, I have two prep periods back to back on Monday morning, so I have the luxury to do it on Monday morning. Um, I also have seventh period prep on Friday, so sometimes I'll do most of it on Friday afternoon. But um, it's sort of a nice, like, non-academic way to start my day, too, uh, to start my week. Yeah. Um, I spent a lot of time over the summer with my husband, just sort of talking out the nuts and bolts, and then I did a lot of adjusting as I went. Last year, at the beginning of the first semester, I realized that although the num I was happy with the number of XP that they needed to get for, every, for each level, um, the number of XP I was offering for things was not enough. So I had to adjust all of the, uh, the amounts for all of the bonus XP and things like that. Um, I don't know, time is so kind of fluid in the summer, so I'm <laughs> not really sure um, um, how much time it took. The, the compiling of all the bonus XP was pro is probably the most time consuming, um, and I'm just kind of always adding, always adding to that and giving students more and more opportunities. So, I mean, in terms of summer, uh, maybe a few days, um, just kind of thinking about it and bouncing ideas back and forth and talking about games with my husband and doing some research. Oh yeah, it's not really a ceremony. Um, it's like, hey, these 10 kids are leveling up, so come on up and get your whatever. And depending on the class, sometimes they applaud. Other times they grumble because they, did, they didn't also level up. Oh, that's all right. I can't even read it, sorry. <laughs> it just keeps showing me signs. I don't know what they say. Um, <laughs> yeah, your last one. We do explicitly teach study skills like note taking and how to study for tests and things like that. Um, I don't give tests and my classroom is just structured a little bit differently. So we, we do team teaching where the four core curricular teams, um, we all share students. And so I agree to take on the burden of the more abstract skills like making sure that you have their materials, making sure you have your binder reminder, making sure you're checking Schoology consistently learning how to participate in a class discussion. I have more class discussions than um, the other content areas on my team. And then my other team teachers sort of, we split up the study skills. So I just intentionally have sort of taken the ones that are way less concrete um, because I think those are really important for kids as they, as they move through the academic system too. Last one. Yes, Class Dojo was originally how I was planning to track the XP, but I, um, I couldn't figure out a way to automatically assign kids five XP at the beginning of every day. And so then, and I really am, although I'm a super techie teacher, I also really like my clipboard <laughs> where I'm like writing things down. Um, but yeah, I could see Class Dojo working. My students are not into Class Dojo. Um, so I, it would have just been a tracking tool for me that I think would have more things than I really needed to track what I'm tracking. So, thank you guys so much for coming. I hope this was interesting and informative. Um, the tiny URL has the link to this presentation. It also has my, all, my document with all my bonus XP and the document um, with the, the poster that I use with all my level up stuff for my kiddos. So feel free to steal it or shoot me an email if you wanna adapt it for your classroom. Um, thanks for coming, and I hope you've had a really, really lovely weekend.